was a couple of years ago that I was in L.A. and talked to Scott Peters, and he said, uh, what are you doing, Steve? And I said, oh, I'm working on such and such a show. I said, what are you doing? And he said, well, I'm working on V. And I said, oh, that old series. And he goes, yeah, yeah. And he was the, that was the first time that I heard uh, that uh, the whole series was being resurrected from Scott. You know, Ken Johnson created an amazing uh, um, story 25 years ago. I didn't want to tread all over it, um, but I did want to advance it. I saw the miniseries when I was a kid, um, and I enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, and it was actually kind of fun to, it's fun to watch it 25 years later. But interestingly enough, it's still, besides the fact that it's got 80s visual effects, it's still a super compelling, fun miniseries. Your initial instinct is just like, yes, this is amazing, I wanna do it, I can't wait. And then, you know, some time sinks in and you realize, okay, now I actually have to go and do the job, and it is an, an enormous job. Um, you know, I'd never worked on a show before that had uh, such massive amounts of visual effects. We have these floating holographic screens. We have doors that open and close that are all visual effects. We have explosions. We didn't want it to look too science fiction-y. Um, so in terms of the creation of the set, the virtual sets in particular, any of the standing sets that we use, the same people create the virtual sets and then they turn over their plans and their designs to the visual effects house. There's really two main components of the visual effects for the show. The first is the ships and the V technology and um, you know what the Vs are from a physiological standpoint. And then there's the environment of the mothership itself and the virtual set stuff. We were fortunate enough to be involved very early um, in the process. Warner Brothers brought us in to look at the script very early on before it was even greenlit. So we had a couple of early concept meetings. If you read the pilot, it's got spaceships coming to Earth and it's got panels unfurling and, you know, spaceship interiors and all this stuff that's written in there. And their first question to us is, can we even do it? The ship is huge and it may give you a kind of an unsettled feeling to know that it sort of looks like a snake, but as you get inside, these are to, to some degree human-scaled environments. Big, but human-scaled. To show the interior of a, of, a, of a structure that is that big um, was something that we just knew that we wouldn't be able to build on a soundstage or find if we were to go on location someplace. We talked about doing, you know, what we've done on um, other shows, which is building a portion of the set with a green screen plug, and you'd extend it. So there's practical stuff there, but there were so many sets that became impractical. And the way that the design started going is like, this is a huge ship. This ship is a half a mile across. So it was decided in the pilot that we were just going to go for it and shoot all the ship interiors on green screen and build them as virtual sets. Let him aboard. I want to talk to him. He's dangerous. Why don't we destroy him like any other traitor? When you do so much green screen work, the visual effects are finished well past usually the point of when you have to deliver a cut. You really can't make mistakes. It's very less forgiving, um, a show like this. Now walk, walk away. Okay. Walk past now. It was disorienting for me at first to walk into this. Literally, almost the entire room is bright green. I mean, we rarely have anything in the space around us. It's such a large space to be acting in. And it's almost like you just want to like consume into yourself because you have so much space, it's overwhelming as an actor to not have the props. Welcome aboard, Agent Evans. There are no firearms or any personal items allowed in Anna's private quarters. I have a vivid and varied imagination, so imagination work has never been a problem for me. Um, surrounded by a green cavernous space, maybe. <laughs> One of the things that was helpful was they, they now have the technology where they can mat in the, the room that they're going to paint around us. The Zoic came up with a uh, process called the Zeus uh, system. This is the Zoic environmental unification system. Which has to do with uh, the ability to put a camera uh, on an actor 
on a monitor, you can see what the actual background would look like. And that just seems like a weatherman's trick. The thing that it did that really advanced the technology was that when the actor walked or moved or sat and the camera followed them, the background would track in exactly the same time. I guess I'll walk you upstairs to where uh, some of our 3D artists are okay. working. Yeah, these are all our um, 3D and 2D artist boxes. Here. Gentlemen. Hi. How are you? This is actually very opportunistic that both James and Nate are here. I'm Nate Overstrom, and uh, I'm a compositing lead and uh, 2D supervisor here at Zoak Studios. The Zeus system is, uh, is capturing all the, all the tracking data real time uh, while they're shooting. Basically, the, the camera's on a gyroscope that has a bunch of calibrated uh, lasers. So it looks up at the ceiling to see where it is on the, on the set and whether or not you're rotating the camera down or around and whatnot. So we can transfer all the uh, tracking data um, without them having to uh, uh, retrack from hand as much. I've asked a lot of you with Tyler. You've handled it well. Uh, we had uh, 18 shots in the sequence. Here's a, here's a wide working chamber shot, and we're just trying to make sure that what we have uh, coming up matches the this, slope this that we put together. As you saw before, there was a, the set didn't have much in the way of atmospherics. You saw uh, the bare bones version of the set. Most of these others are uh, the same color corrections and things uh, uh, applied to uh, 2D stills. And we used uh, very straightforward 2D tracking solutions to get most of these uh, close up angles. So cool. here, you know, it's pretty much the same, same thing as the reverse angle as the other one. We still, uh, did nap paintings for the submerged eggs and, and applied effects to uh, get them to uh, sit in the same pot the way. Um, the only practical one is the one that she picks up. The rest of them were rendered out of 3D and, or uh, reprojected in, inside of new. We're looking at it from a technical perspective as well as a creative perspective. We're talking about how they balance the lights and what's blown out and whether we add, uh, you know, atmosphere. We add a lot of atmosphere to these shots to give it the depth that we need. And we put all the flares and all the imperfections and the dust hits and all that kind of stuff, and we try to put that over the top of a lot of the shots we do to give it that feeling of realism. Do another tour up the stairs over here too. There's a lot of caverns inside this studio. Yeah. So there's an artist bungalow up there. There's one up here as well. Hey Sal, how are you? We have another um, service, I guess, that we offer. It's called Digital Prosthetics. I guess my thing that I specialize in is more like textures, any of the sort of organic lizard skin reveals that we see, the claws, any sort of, sort of creature work is sort of the thing that I like to do. Well, what I'll do initially is I'll create sort of the asset um, before we even get it into shots, and I'll sort of set up just like a lighting and um, get the textures together and the shaders. Here. This is sort of what the, the texture would look like. Then I've got, you know, another layer that'll be just blood. Time and money is just not there on the episodics, you know, schedule outside the pilot. So what we did is we recreated the interior piece of the V skin for the arm and for the face. It's like this. Um, and I go in and I hand paint sort of the blood. And then we have the lizard skin, which is underneath. I'm sure Toby talked to you about how to cast Dale's head and make a thing and, and open it up and then put another thing inside there. So we went to Toby's original material, took tons of pictures of the eyes and the skull, 
all the stuff in, in, in the arm, and then what we're doing now is we created a digital prosthetic piece. So he just has sort of a green screen prosthetic, and then we've got the tear on that's wow. in working, that's being worked on right now. So what we've done um, for a lot of our other shows is work really closely with prosthetics because there's no time to build any animatronics on the show. So anytime anything's moving, like when Ryan opens up his eye and you see that eye slide up, we're gonna have to go ahead and, 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 and make that happen. So here's the final composite that we delivered. We had our tracking department uh, uh, track his eyeball. Uh, we had a couple of modelers uh, kind of build multiple layers of the eyeball so there's um, there's the alien eye and then there's the uh, the kind of membrane of a human eye um, they're both rendered separately uh, to be able to separate out and color correct and match um, uh, match the plate and each requires its own own uh, amount of work there are a lot of other um, visual effects involved in the show in the third episode we introduce a concept of, uh, that we call blue energy which we learn in the third episode is, is the power that runs the ship. No human has ever seen this before. You were the first, Tyler. In episode eight, we find out that Anna um, is going to try and use, is going to try and bring blue energy to the world to, to save the world's energy crisis problems. So this is the um, blue energy sequence that we worked on. We had two particles, um, CG particles. People basically work on getting this blue energy look developed. So basically, um, Anna is demonstrating how they create energy. And we just got these plates from um, production. And everything that you see on top, we just you know created an composite on top. All of the particles, all the blue energy is uh, 3D, came out in like three different layers, mm -hmm. and I put it together um, with a lot of different effects. And then in the final episode of the season, we'll also see another application of the blue energy where uh, it's actually turned against her. So we're able to take these, vir these visual effect elements and kind of create a story around them. The biggest challenge for the show has been, can we continually, week to week, create the material at the scope and scale and quality as we did for the pilot, on time and on budget? It's interesting because everyone gets it too. Like, I mean, it's, in the beginning, we had, there were a couple of moments where everybody was freaked out and, hey, is this visual effects scene gonna look the way we imagined it? And now, now the good news is, studio network, when they see the cuts, they get it. I don't think that the control level has lessened any in the development of the new 3D technology. It still starts off with a, uh, a sketch. It still starts off with a metaphor that we attach. It goes on from there to uh, illustrations. Uh, then it will go into the 3D. Eventually, you know, we're really on the forefront of this technology. There's not another show in town that's doing this at the scale that we're doing it. Um, I think, you know, my prediction is that this is the kind of thing that you, you're seeing near final now at this very bleeding edge stage of what this technology is. As this goes forward and we do season after season after season, you will see final shots off the set. You know, we're seeing so many virtual environments in, in movies, TV shows, you know, everywhere. I mean, this kind of technology is going to be you know, transform like the images that we see, especially on, on for television and broadcast.